To say that I am aggravated right now would be an understatement. I have already filmed this video and two other videos actually, and it wasn't until going to edit that I realized my mic wasn't plugged in all the way. Not only that, but I had used the last life of any battery that I had in this house for the camera. Can't find my battery charger, so I had to drive to Best Buy to get a new battery charger just to refilm the three videos today that took two hours to film in the first place. I know you don't care because it's just a YouTube video, it's not that serious, but I am very annoyed right now that I have to redo these videos today. Anyway, today we're gonna be talking about Happy Death Day to You, which I am not a huge fan of the first one as told by this video, clearly by the title. I thought it was one of the worst films that was done in 2018, right, it came out 2018? 2017, came out 2017. I just don't get the genre. I like a few dark comedies here and there, like Tucker Dale vs. Evil is great, but beyond that, it's just not my genre. I feel like I'm really picky when it comes to comedy especially, and if the jokes aren't strong and they don't land well, it's gonna be a no from me. And that, it's safe to say that that's what Happy Death Day is as a franchise. It's now a franchise, guys, did you know? Well, it's probably most likely going to be a franchise. There was a rumor that if the second one did really well in the box office and they would make a third one, there is talk about the third one. They say they already have a great idea for it, so we shall see. Although I'm pretty 100% sure that they're going to make a third one and now it's gonna be a series. Obviously, I'm not a huge fan of them, but I'm still watching them, so I guess it's working. I'm gonna try to get like a spoiler free summary of kind of what this movie is about but that's really difficult to do because there's so much in the movie that isn't in the trailer and the trailer makes it look like a repeat almost of the first film which it is not and I'm so grateful that they did that. The director didn't want to just copy and like redo the story of the first one being like Groundhog's Day which is actually the film that inspired the first one and what inspired the second one was Back to the Future 2. So this movie took on a new genre of sci-fi which was interesting. I was actually very happy and very pleased by that. However shallow the sci-fi was, it was still better that they did that than just redo the same story even with a new character or whatever than as they did in the first one. They also said the third movie would be a different genre as well so what that would even be who knows. So based on the trailer we can see that Teresa or Tree has ended up back in her loop of constantly dying being murdered every day except this time she is using this as a means as a kind of a tool to figure out how to end her loop how to get out of her loop. So instead of waiting for the day to reset by being murdered murdered by someone, she kills herself over and over again to reset the day. So essentially what happens in the first one is she is stuck in this loop constantly being murdered until she figures out who her murderer is. And in the second one, it takes a whole new plot, right? She is, ends up in a new loop or basically the same loop as before. And I will get into spoilers and everything because it is so hard to review this movie without talking about spoilers because it is a huge plot point in the movie, but I don't want to ruin it for you guys if you haven't seen it yet. I will say just my overall thoughts without spoilers yet, it was more interesting I think than the first one because it was more plot heavy and there's still the dramatic elements to it. It still kind of made me teary in the theater like the first one did. So they have that like drama aspect and obviously the comedic and jokey aspects which aren't my favorite in the franchise in the films um, because I just feel like a lot of times it feels very try hard and it ends up being more cringy than like laughable. So this one did that as well. In fact, this one I feel like they added even more comedy to it. So in essence, this is basically a comedy sci-fi movie. We get no horror. The things that are meant to or could be horrific and terrifying such as the suicide montage are played out as like a joke and some of them are so over the top it is ridiculous and I roll my eyes at certain scenes of these suicide different ways that she's like killing herself. Some of them are in the trailer you can see. Some of them are just ridiculous in the movie. So the movie picks up about halfway through and you get you kind of understand more about what's going on and it's an interesting take. I still think it's a take and a story that's kind of been done before, just like Groundhog's Day, just like the first movie. But I guess it's original in the sense that it's combining that with a comedy romance 
drama movie. I don't even, there's so many genres. It's still not my favorite film, although I did enjoy it more than I kind of anticipated because I went in with really low expectations. I'm gonna be honest. Usually I have like a predetermined, you know, sense of whether I'm gonna like something or not. And I wasn't a huge fan of the first one, obviously. So I kind of saw this movie reluctantly because I wanted to review it and, you know, see if it could do better than the first. And I do think it did but it's still not great and I'm not really interested in rewatching it. If you are into like comedy, drama, sci-fi films, then I guess watch this in the theaters. Overall, I would just give it a pass and just wait for it to come out. It wasn't the best sequel in the world and although it was interesting given that they changed the genre a little bit, still not great. So I would say pass. I would give it like a six out of 10, honestly, and that's because I'm feeling a little generous today. So I'm gonna get into spoilers actually because there's a huge gripe I have with the end of the film and the plot point within the end and it's a huge spoiler basically is the whole ending of the film. So I don't wanna spoil it for those of you who do still want to see it and don't want to know what happens so I'm gonna get into that now so you can turn off the video if you don't want to know. So basically the whole plot in this movie is that when she is thrown back into her loop of living this day every day until she dies and then you know resetting the day it is basically she's thrown into a new dimension so everything is different her boyfriend is dating her best friend best friend I don't know she's not why do they call her best friend? I don't know. The sorority sister who's like the leader. I don't know what that's called. I don't, I've never been in a sorority. <laughs> so her boyfriend's actually dating one of her like enemies kind of, and her mom is actually alive in this dimension. Whereas if we've seen the first one, you know that her mom is dead in the first movie. So while they're trying to figure out this algorithm to close the loop, given that she keeps killing herself every day, having to memorize every algorithm and test it every single day. And if it doesn't work, oh, I guess I gotta kill myself to reset the day so we can try again. So as they're figuring this out, she realizes she wants to stay in the current dimension where her mom is alive and her boyfriend is not her boyfriend. However, she finds out that her boyfriend dies in this dimension and she decides to go back to her old dimension. Now that's my biggest issue with it, is that she chose her boyfriend over her mom. And I get that there's like, you shouldn't, like the mom says in the scene where she's saying goodbye to her mom, you shouldn't hold on to the past, she's already grieved her mother, and also this dimension holds memories that are not her own, because it's not the life that she has lived. So obviously going back to her original dimension is the right idea, but they framed it in a way that makes her look like she chose her boyfriend over her mom. And I, she's known this guy for literally one day. Let's keep that in mind. She's relived the day 11 times. At most 11 days, she's dated this guy and fell in love. I don't know. So to me, it just seemed unrealistic. Granted, the whole movie is obviously not supposed to be realistic, but it just, who would do that? Who, especially because her mom is still so young and like healthy in this dimension, just because he dies, like someone's gotta die here. So why would you make it your mom? <laughs> Maybe that's like nitpicky and like I'm in the minority and thinking that, but the two friends that I saw this movie with also thought the same thing and thought it was stupid that she went with her mom. I do think it was smart she went back to that dimension in general because that is her real life. She doesn't know anything about the past of the current dimension, so it wouldn't make sense to stay, but still. I thought it was a little weird that they framed it that way. And the ending is just so cheesy, like so much of it is cheesy. A lot of the jokes are cheesy. It is just, there is an end of the credits, little blip that you can see. I didn't see it personally. My friend saw it. He like ran back in and watched it and I had decided to leave because I'm like, mm. I don't really care about these movies, but he told me what happened and it is set up for a third film and it looks like it'll follow the girl named Danielle, I think is her name. She's the sorority sister, like leader enemy kind of thing, like frenemy and then also the one who is dating her boyfriend in this other dimension. So it kind of ends with them approaching her and her friends now asking like, hey, can we put someone in a loop and do this experiment and then they put Danielle into a loop where she constantly dies. So it's gonna be interesting. I have heard that the girl who plays Tree would be in the third one. So we shall see what happens in the third movie. I will still see it, and if you want me to review it, I will, but I really think at this point it is far beyond the horror genre, so I kind of feel like this doesn't deserve a whole review on my channel, but I do wanna go into more genres, but you tell me if you want me to review the third one. It should be like 
released in 2020, 2021. So I still think it's kind of a fun movie. I was entertained throughout all of it, but ultimately it is not my favorite, obviously, of the year. And I was not really that excited to see it. But you tell me, what did you think about Happy Death Day to you? What did you think about the first one and like the whole series in general and it even being a series? Are you excited for the third one? Let me know all your opinions down below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.